is Rashmi Shah and I'm a research technologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. My interests include flying, traveling, and exploring nature. Hi, I'm Clara Evans. I'm a 17-year-old high school student and I am the founder of To Dubai. Our main goal is to bring down the divisiveness that is plugging United States politics right now. It's my duty to be an activist and to fight for change. We're hopeful because Los Angeles is in the forefront of national efforts to power our future. Welcome back to Nerd Girl Nation. Nerd girls are passionate about everything they do. And today we have two awesome guests that are doing exactly that. We have Rushmi Shah from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And we've got Clara Nevins, who's a high school student. She's an activist. And I believe truly in my heart that you're looking at a future president right here. So you saw her here first. Oh, Clara. <laughs> Well, no, I didn't mean you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Let's start out by talking to Rushmi. What is your background? I come from Nepal. It's very, very common for girls in Nepal to get married when they're Clara's age. It's, it's really sad, but, you know, sh she would be considered old. How did you manage to break that mold? My dad ended up becoming a prof college professor there, and uh, my mom, after my brother was born, she was like, I can't sit at home and do nothing. I'm going to go work. So she broke the barrier for me. Oh, so she was a nerd she, girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when it came time for me, you know, my parents, they always wanted me to have a career. So they were willing to help me whenever possible. So awesome. um, She just threw mad shade at you about your age. <laughs> she called you old in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> What's your date? Because when I was your age, I believe I may have stolen a car and I was partying. <laughs> and you are, I guess, changing the world. <laughs> Are you a regular 17-year-old? Is this I, what you guys are doing? I, I wouldn't say that I'm definitely a regular 17-year-old. I, I would say that school is pretty much the center of my life. And on the weekends, I like to hang out with my friends. And um, so, yeah, pretty normal. That's cool. Well, if you ever want to steal a car. <laughs> I'll know who to ask. Rush me. What were you like when you were, say, you know, Claire's age. I was causing problem at home. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of trouble did you get in? Do I dare ask? No, uh, I, I grew up in a country in the middle of civil war, so we had our own Ooh. sets of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, challenges. But uh, getting into trouble, mm. I would skip a lot of classes. <laughs> you don't skip your classes. So you're a genius at skip classes. That's I like far them. more irritating than you just going <laughs> to those classes. Right. Rashmi, tell us what an aerospace engineer is and how do you study to be one? I started out studying electrical engineering. I wanted to build small satellites. Through that, I got an opportunity to intern at NASA and that was my entry point. Mm -hmm. My typical day involves looking at data that's coming down. I look at satellite data coming down. One of my experiments is actually is an oil platform um, off the coast of California where we have instruments installed to uh, measure sea level. How do you get to work? To the oil platform, I take a helicopter out there. You do this every day? No, not every day. <laughs> every once in a while. Sounds like a way more fun commute than, <laughs> than driving. Well, you've never <laughs> driven my Prius then. <laughs> One of the reasons I want to talk about data is because because when you're trying to convince a politician, if you show them a bunch of numbers, sometimes that's intimidating to anybody. So one of the things I noticed NASA does a lot of is what we call visualization, meaning putting pictures and colors to the they numbers. They have to dumb it down for people <laughs> with pictures. So, so pictures are worth a thousand words, and it's truly mm -hmm. true because when you see it, is when you believe it. Now, Claire, you have an awesome website, Bridge the Divide, which is trying to get all youth to talk. What kind of data are you using and how are you influencing youth to, to change the world? Um, well, I'm still in high school, so not don't have that kind of commute. Can you um, even drive? I, I have my permit. I'm yet a little slow on the license. Failed my test once. You <laughs> failed your test. Out of everything you know about studying, and you it failed was, a driving test. It was a test. rolling stop. It wasn't that big of a deal. But. Yeah, no, <laughs> pedestrians are like, whatever. You're going to save people and then, like, kill one. 
Um, I uh, use statistics in uh, basically talking to the young people who are involved in my organization and basically giving them the information they need to tell other people, politicians. We do a lot of um, lobbying, which basically means convincing politicians to support environmental laws. And a lot of our articles and um, discussions have been about climate change because it's true. It's really what young people feel like is a pressing issue. Do you think that if you could send a flash mob email to a politician and shut down their server <laughs> as a nonviolent <laughs> protest. Would that make the point as effectively as having a million man march in front of their front door? What, what do you think is more effective? I think definitely the million man march. Malcolm Gladwell calls this phenomenon weak ties when you're not, you don't actually have a physical stake. Mm -hmm. Email is like the safe route. So Rashmi, how do you think the science and technology you're developing could help her generation and the future generations a scientist's job is to make sure that the data that's coming out and the news that's coming out is correct. I look at the data on a daily basis trying to make sure that we're not doing something in the instrument that we are collecting the data from that's causing noise into the information. What's the most terrifying thing you've both seen from the effects of climate change that made you go, oh, we need to do something? I think the scariest thing for me, I attended COP21, which is the big Paris UN climate talks last year. There was this one woman, she was from a like an island in the middle of the Pacific, I believe. She watched her son playing on the island and then suddenly the waters just rose and the son had to run back inside. And like that was just incredible. It was written in a poem. There is a baby walking wobbly across the edge of a reef, not yet underwater. There's all these islands that are disappearing. We need to constantly know in a global way how much ocean is rising, which island is going to disappear in the next few years, and eventually we want to understand how Earth as a whole is changing. Mm -hmm. What can I be doing right now? I would say to have an awareness of the resources you use. After we are aware is when we start taking actions. What's next for you, Clara? Applying to colleges is next. What about you? I'll keep developing new technologies that will monitor Earth more accurately. You have a successful woman doing the science and technology to make things better, and you have an up-and-coming future United States president. If you don't want to be president, you don't have yes, to. She does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. I am so sorry. Someone's got an agenda over here. I want to eat off the White House china. I guess. Hey, no, just say that at the start. Just buy a china and she'll leave you alone. There you go. So we want to thank you so much for both joining us today here on Nerd Girl Nation. Whoa, it freaks me out to think about how the sea levels rise. She takes a chopper to measure the water and help me visualize. They're ready to share this spreading awareness. They've got planetary pride. From aerospace to the human race, they bridge the divide. It's people like you who really set the stage and I know some folks who were stealing cars when they were your age but now you're turning the page cause you're never too young to fight for change and all of these obstacles are just barriers to break we need a NASA woman cause that's the woman who really saved the day you're never too young to fight for, fight for change, and you're never too young to fight for, fight for change.